Hi everyone, welcome to Vector 36. So this is a skimmer building and racing simulator game where you fly these skimmers, which are like hovercrafts across the surface of Mars in a series of races. And it is a simulator game. Oh, woo! <laughs> it's not messing around when it comes to that. This game is complicated as fuck. And it's really fun. So these skimmers, they're basically hovering. They don't have any traction. So they kind of just float along, glide through turns, and they go super fast. They're powered by electromagnetic repulsion with the iron in the soil of Mars. And what that means is uh, they go faster the closer they are to the ground. So while you can fly up super high in the air, I could fly up above those, uh... Jesus, uh, Above those ledges there, if I maneuver properly. But I want to stay close to the ground so I can go fast, because I'm in sixth place and I need to start hauling ass here. Uh-oh, overheating. You can see my heat meter in my throttle. And as I boost, I build up heat. But heat is dissipated by how fast I'm going. So the faster you go, the faster you dissipate heat. So really, this game is all about going as fast as you can. Uh-oh. Staying as close to the ground as possible, which without actually slamming into it and exploding and dying. Now, the other major aspect of this game is actually building your skimmer. You have some serious control over all the parts of your skimmer, where you put them, how you align them, and that all affects how your skimmer handles, like stuff like the angle of the thrusters and the lifters, it makes a huge difference. Uh, so it's a really frustrating system trying to build a skimmer and you can just take off the start line and slam face first into the dirt or just fly up into the air, oh god, oh god. But, once you actually get the hang of it, come on, what's going on here? Once you actually get the hang of it, and you build the proper skimmer, it's really satisfying. Man, I'm doing really bad this race. That's okay, I'm kind of distracted. Now, one of the other mechanics is the bias. So I have the bias meter that's at 85% right now. That is... The, the distribution of power between your main engine and your uh, lifter thrusters that keep you up in the air. So right now, 85% of the power is going towards my main engine. Oh god, oh god! And because of that, I wasn't able to get enough lift to go over that hill. And I've got to wait for my little, uh, my little robot crew to put my piece back on. Turn my guy back on, and start going again, try to salvage this race. Now this race is not just a one-off thing, it's a tournament, a two-race tournament, so I could potentially salvage my chances in the second race. I'm just uh, hoping I don't get eighth place. Oh no, my skimmer's caught on fire. <laughs> okay, so it turned off, okay, the fire is over, okay, turn back on, turn back on, come on! Yes! I just turned my back, back on! Okay! Okay! Jesus Christ! Oh no! Oh, that's okay. That's not number eight. That's just me getting lapped. But <laughs> number one. I got seventh place! Alright, let's go to the next race. Redemption time. I can focus more. I think I covered a lot of aspects of the game right there. I'll go more in detail about the building of these uh, little hovercrafts once I finish these races, and I can go into the garage. Alright. So, boost off. Let's set my bias to 85 again. I think that's a pretty good number for this hunk of junk I'm flying. Let's take a look at my uh, craft, by the way. You can fly like that, but it's a lot harder. Now, this is the starting vehicle, but I have a bunch of upgrades on it, so I've been putting all my money into upgrading the starting little chunker because I like it. I'm gonna ride this thing to the top. 
And you have a bunch of different races to choose from. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, I'm good, I'm good. Just gotta let my thing cool down. You can choose from a bunch of different races. So, and there's a bunch of different leagues as well based on the power and the weight of your craft. So I'm in the Steel League, which is like one of the noob leagues. Because I'm flying a big heavy junker, which means most of these bots that I'm flying against are pretty crappy ships as well, which makes my uh, poor performance even more pathetic. But I can salvage this. This is a long map. Oh, I love these environments. Now these are bots, and this game does not have like direct multiplayer. Uh oh. Woo! Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. This game does not have direct multiplayer where you race directly against other players, but you can race against um, players' ghosts, like their replays, and you can download like the top players' replays and race against them until you can beat them, and then you become the top replay, which is pretty cool. So it's kind of like asynchronous multiplayer, which is actually great for a VR game, because this game really doesn't have a lot of people playing it. It's definitely an underrated game. It's made by one guy, which is probably the most mind-blowing thing about this game. Oh shit! Skimmer's on fire! Alright, alright. Shit, shit, shit! Alright, turn it back on. No, no. Our radiators are down. Waiting for my bots. Yeah, this game's made by one guy, and it's like... Really freaking amazing game. One more heat sink. I'm doing really bad. But I'm gonna stick it out to the end. Gotta finish the race! Come on, guys, come on! I love these little bots. It's such a cool mechanic. Okay, okay. I got some radiator faults, which isn't too bad. It's gonna affect my heating, how much I can boost. But I should be able to make it to the end. Hopefully, at least get seventh place. This game is ridiculously fun. Now this game is not early access, it's actually a full release. It went into early access about a year ago, I think. So it's had a good amount of development put into it by the one guy who's been developing it. And it's honestly one of my favorite VR games already. I played it like all day yesterday and all day today. Man, I'm pretty sad about my uh, performance in this tournament. Usually I do better. That's okay. I'll knock out another race next. A quick race. Which way am I going here? This way, this way. That sign always confuses me! <laughs> With a triangle! Alright. I'm still 7th place. See, my thing's going pretty fast. Uh-oh. Skimmer fire. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, come on, come on. Back online, back online. There we go. <laughs> uh, did it come back online? Nope. <laughs> there, now it's on online. Oh god, oh god. No, no. I lost 7th place. I could probably limp my way in there right now without a radiator. It's not like you can't fly without it, it's just that your ship will be imbalanced. And you'll have to make some major corrections. Alright, alright. Come on. Finish the race. It's a brutal game. Very unforgiving. You can be like destroying a race in first place, and then you mess up a turn, a couple parts pop off, it takes forever for your bots to put them back on, and suddenly you're in like sixth or fifth place. Did I make it? Yeah, that was the end. The embarrassment is over. All right, let me go back to my garage. Here's my big hunk of junk. 
Now, this screen itself is pretty cool. I can be like, all right, turn yourself on. Okay, now give me control. Go forward, boost! Up! Oh. <laughs> it's so cool how it's like tethered to the ropes and just struggling around. Or, if you want, let's see. Now it's not a perfect VR interface. I'm using the little mouse nub on the X52 stick to control this uh, pointer here. Now you can take uh, control of it in like a little simulation environment. So this is really useful when you're uh, modifying your ship. Which I will show you a brief preview of right here. So you can change out all of these different features. The thruster. You've got like the center of mass and you align the thruster with that in a certain way and then you angle it in order to drive your nose up or drive it down or make it completely like uh, neutral and then you've got your lifters you've got big ones in the front here and if I zoom around to the back I have little back lifters that are smaller and there's all sorts of stuff you have to mess with with the vectors which is the way the like uh, the thrust comes out from there and I've got my heat sinks on here I don't want to get too deep into that because it could take ages talking about it um, but it's a really intense system. I also don't want to mess with it because then my ship will be horrible and uh, start flopping around. So I'm going to go back to another race. Let's do a quick race. So you can just shoot. It just generates a random race for you. With a little cash prize. A couple laps, one track. See how I do. Hopefully I can get first place in one of these. I totally bombed in that tournament. Okay. There she is, my beautiful skimmer. I really want to start earning some money so I can uh, get the skimmer really pimped out, start winning some tournaments, and then upgrade to a really good fast skimmer. The problem is, I keep crashing and destroying my skimmer, and it costs a shit ton to repair it, which drains all of my money, sets me back to zero. That's the life of an up-and-coming skimmer racer. I mean, I just started yesterday, so I'm still a noob. But hey, look, I'm in first place right now. 85% bias, which means I'm going pretty fast. I could pump it even farther, but I don't want to push my luck. Jump the gap! Yeah, this game just blows my mind that it was made by a single developer. I mean, the graphics, while they aren't amazing, they're pretty good. And they do the job. It's very immersive. And you can really just get in the zone in this game. Because it's so realistic. Especially if you have, like, the whole HOTUS set up. But even with an Xbox controller. Where it's just fun, flying around. It's like, um, pod racing, but better. Because that's something that I've always wanted to see in VR. Like, oh, I want the pod racing game. It's not like the pod racing games are really that great, but it's a cool concept. This, with the whole simulation aspect, oh shit, shit, <laughs> is uh, way, way cooler than I bet any pod racing game would be. So I am just like loving this game. I highly recommend it. It's 25 bucks, I think. So, I mean, keep in mind, if you get motion sickness, this game is probably going to destroy your stomach. But, for me, as per usual, uh-oh, I'm good. Oh, my ship is good too, okay. It's a nice soft landing there. Oh god. Uh, why are we not turning here, ship? Alright, emergency maintenance! Just the skimmer life. There we go, there we go. Oh, I'm still in first place! How am I still in first place? Uh, that is my one problem I've had with these X-52 joysticks. It's probably just because of the setup I have. Okay, we got a fire. 
but sometimes I gotta pull out the cable and reseat it to get my stick working again. In the middle of combat, we're racing. I don't see anyone on my tail. Coast is looking pretty clear. Another gameplay aspect is uh, you have like defensive countermeasures, like little weapons you can drop by expending fuel. Little Mario Kart type aspects. You change those out by changing your fuel reactor. It's not really worth doing. I'll save my fuel and use it to uh, destroy these bots. Alright, I don't want to get too cocky here, but I think I might win this race. Alright, up and over the chasm. Oh yeah, that was a good jump. Just keep it low to the ground. Keep your finger on the boost. Apparently it's possible to outfit your ship, uh... So you can just permanently boost, and you don't even have to manage your heat. Haven't quite figured out how to do that yet, so I'm still managing my heat. But the possibilities of the uh, customization uh, aspect are crazy, and I'll, I might have to make another video about that once I've actually put a lot more time into this game and learned everything. There's a whole other aspect, which is customizing your ship's computer. And you can customize all of the like uh, inputs and stuff, like the directions and the thrusters and the axes. Set up like dead zone equivalent type things and uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. It's a game that takes a lot of tinkering to figure out with because there's a little bit of information out there, but it's a very like niche small game, so you can't find a whole lot of information. Going pretty slow here. Uh-oh. I'm on fire. Alright, alright, alright. I gotta get my head in the game. Okay. Boost. Boot up, boot up. Alright, I'm still in this. I think this reactor fault may be, uh, Affecting my speed here, because usually I can get faster than this. These bots in this quick race are just not putting up a challenge. Now this is a good chance to look behind me. Nothing there. Come on, baby. Oh, I love the music and the sound and everything in this game. I mean... Once again, just like the fact that one guy made this whole thing, and uh, you could tell me that there was like a team of 10 people on this game, I wouldn't bat an eye, because it really just nailed a lot of aspects in it. It is a shame that there's no direct multiplayer, but you know, I'm sure there will be a sequel someday. That'll probably be the killer VR app, because this game already is uh, just so ridiculously fun. If you ever played Elite Dangerous, if you like Elite Dangerous, <laughs> uh, then play this game, because playing this game and being like, oh, what if you could do this in Elite Dangerous? Like, racing along in the planets, just like a dream. And you can live the dream. I'm about to lap this guy. Oh, God. No, no! Don't fall in the chasm. Come on. Oh, no! <laughs> alright, alright, that's good, that's good. We're flying now. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, coming through! Uh-oh. Okay. Forward. That's how you gotta turn. You just throw your ship around, and then apply as much forward thrust as you can to straighten it out. Alright, let's skim along the ground. Get some speed here. I'm sick of this 300, 200. Oh, but I'm overheating. Ah. That's okay, that was a skim. Oh, what's going on here? Get out of my way! Forward, 
49 seconds slower on that one. I'm going really slow. It must be that reactor fault. I've never had a reactor fault before. I've had all sorts of faults though. You can have like a cockpit fault, and then your UI starts like blinking and giving you false readings and stuff. It's actually pretty hilarious. Oh god, this part. Oh, this gets me. Okay, okay. I'm in like super slow mode. That's okay, I'm gonna limp my way to the finish line. As long as it's first place, it doesn't matter. I, w I definitely won't be setting a uh, world record though. Now you can also race against your own ghosts, which is fun. Good way to maybe see what you did wrong in your last run so you can improve. And that's what I love about this game is that uh, there's just so much room to improve. Not an attribute that you find very often in VR games. That's why I love... Another fire here. That's why I love simulation games in VR. Alright, come back on. <laughs> I love that. Always comes on at like the last second. Okay, okay. Still in first place. I got a radiator fault now, too. Okay, so with the uh, ECU, which is like the computer control. You can also do shit like um, set up better um, accesses, like better pitch or roll, so you can control your ship maybe more like a spaceship. Uh, or if you want, you can just buy a really good gyroscope that uh, balances your ship and then control your ship completely with yaw and it'll automatically balance. So there's all sorts of options and customization you can do for your ship. It's crazy. Uh, uh. I got first place out of eight. Four thousand bucks in my pocket, which is all the credits that I have because uh, before this video I crashed and destroyed my <laughs> ship and spent all my credits. But that's okay, because I love this little junker. And now I can go to the shop and see if I can buy any upgrades. So you can buy parts, you can sell parts, buy other ships. You just gotta race, win races, win tournaments. And then as you upgrade, you go up into different leagues. So I'm in Steel League, I could go up to, I don't know what, what the next metal type is, but then I'd start getting more money. So as you put more money into your vehicle, you make more money. Pretty cool system. But you can get like uh, new thrusters. That one doesn't look too good, actually. Ooh, this one is 100 out of 100 max power, which is really good. But there's all sorts of other shit you can get. Lift, vectors. See, this one looks totally different than the ones I'm using, but it's also very low power. See, like, some of them have different response values. I don't know what all this stuff does, honestly. Different uh, heat sinks here, which you attach to the side of your ship. They all have different cooling values. Fuel reactors, um, so you can put more fuel in your ship, and these also change the type of special, like, weapon ability that you have. And then there's the computer. So, not really anything I feel like buying right now. So that is Vector 36. Really, really cool game. I want to look at the garage or the shop, actually. Look at the other ships, too. Because they're not all uh, junkers like this one. This is like a refurbished trading skimmer. But the high-end ones are purpose-built racing skimmers, as the uh, in-game loading screen tooltip says. So this is like the second level one, the grasshopper. This one is pretty freaking crazy, actually. Hammerhead. And then there is the Quill RS. I want this one. This one looks awesome. And it's like super sleek and fast. This one not yet available. That's pretty, pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna hop into one more race. 
and I'll just kind of mess around. Actually, I can just mess around with uh, some of the garage stuff right now. <laughs> mess around with my ship and show off what that does in the race. So, let's rotate these uh, engines here a little bit. That wasn't doing the trick. Okay, just, just a little. And uh, let's do the same thing with the main engine. So now it's pointing five degrees. We'll save that layout, and then I'll go into a quick race. And just for making a couple small adjustments to uh, my lifters and my thrusters, my ship probably won't handle nearly as well. Usually you can just check this in the little uh, simulation garage. See, now I'm flying way up in the air! Alright! That's okay. Here, I can turn down the bias, which means I'm putting more power to my lifters. And we'll just take a nice little uh, ride up here. Oh, you see those? Those little dots? Those aren't birds, they're the, the drones. The repair drones, they actually follow the racers around, and if you look up, you can see them launching out. Okay, so how am I gonna put my nose down here? Here we go. Nose down. And... I'm not quite ready to boost. Alright, I'm gonna put my bias up, up, up. As high as we can go. Cut the speed. <laughs> See, this is why you don't want to get super high. Now the magnetic or electromagnetic repulsion isn't working, and I'm just floating along super slow. Whoa, okay. So that... Ooh, let's go up in the terraformer. That little effect where the screen goes super black, that's actually your pilot blacking out from the G-forces. It's not like a uh, FOB VR comfort option or anything, as far as I know. Whee! Yeah, I'm just screwing around in this race. Shortcut! Now, if I properly engineered this thing... Oh god, it doesn't like me going that high. There's no way my bots are going to get those from that far away. If I properly engineered this thing... I could set... You, you could probably have a setup where you can, like, kind of go up high and then aim the nose down and boost down. Gain crazy speed like that. In fact, I think a lot of the super fast skimmers can can do that, and that's like their racing strategy, and you can like fly over obstacles and take crazy shortcuts and shit. Oh look, it's my repair drones. They're coming in. This game is so cool. I'm like super screwed by the way. Hey, oh, here we go, here we go. Can we drop all the way? So I had to go through a lot of tweaks in the garage to actually get my skimmer running how it was uh, in this video. And you can just, I can just go back and erase these changes I just made. So don't worry about that. But yeah, that has been Vector36, just a really fun skimmer building and racing simulator game. And if you have a HOTUS, if you're likely dangerous, then I definitely recommend checking it out. But even if you can handle just um, high-intensity racing games and you have an Xbox controller, then check this game out because it is one of the underrated and underappreciated games in VR right now. And uh, for me right now, I am pretty addicted to this <laughs> after just two days, and it's one of my favorite VR games so far. So. Thank you for watching this video. Check out my channel if you want to see more virtual reality gameplay content. And have a great day, and goodbye. Oh man. I cannot get enough of this game. I seriously stayed up all night and played it last night. And, um... 
That's pretty rare for a uh, VR game outside of like Elite Dangerous. A lot of VR games, I'll play them and I'll be like, this is pretty cool and fun, and I'll play it for like a couple hours and then not play it again, but I've just been marathoning this 